if you've followed along on my YouTube channel for even a little while, you know that broadhead edges, broadhead sharpening, broadhead lethality are my core goals and mission. Getting heads sharp, inspecting edges under a microscope through a sharpness tester. It's what I do and I'm doing a re review right now of a broad head, a single bevel head and it made me take pause and so I thought I'd put this together to discuss a single bevel. So the whole point behind a single bevel is to get rotation to breach bone and it's this slope and the forces pushing down on it or on against it that causes the blade to rotate. Now on the other side of the blade is a mirror image going up. This one would going, be going down so it's spinning. Now what I'm showing you here is a 20 degree angle. Here I'm showing you a 40 degree angle. There is less surface area on the 40 degree angle to impart rotation. This head would spin much more. There's much more surface area to cause the rotation. This head has less surface area and will cause less rotation but there is a trade-off and that's what I want to talk about next. Broadhead makers are all doing something a little bit different. Maybe that they all want to be different. Um, I, I'm not sure why but there is a real effect on their choices. So here you'll see a 20 degree bevel. That's the head I'm evaluating now. Here's 24, 25. That's where cutthroats are. 32 is where iron will is. Um, there's some heads that have 35 degree. VPA has 35 degree. Here's a 40 degree bevel. Um, the alien out of Australia is using something around that angle. So they all have a different effect on rotation. Certainly this one will rotate the most. This one will rotate the least at 40 degrees. And they all tout blade thickness and things like that. Well, for as many years as I've been doing this, and I started with single bevels back in 2007, and I was developing my own. Dr. Ashby and I actually wrote an article for Traditional Bowhunter Magazine back in 2008 about single bevels when I was doing a lot of testing. To test the single bevels, I was shooting at cadaver deer with a low poundage, 48 pound homemade longbow, and my own single bevel heads. I was specifically targeting the bony knuckle at the scapula since that represented probably the biggest bone we would hit that would stop an arrow. Then I would debone the front shoulders and do a inspection of the arrow damage in the wound channel. You can see the impact in the knuckle in what is probably the hardest bony mass in the scapula. and with that 48 pound longbow, I was breaching that bone and still getting a pass through. Here's that scapula after shooting through it with a homemade single bevel and a 48 pound longbow. It split it from stem to stern. It made that bone absolutely jump apart. After writing that article with Dr. Ashby and publishing it on my own blog, I was then informed that a single bevel broadhead maker was using my intellectual property on their website. Um, not a problem. I talked to him and I said, hey, either take it down or give me proper citation for the work that I've done. With my microscope and my sharpness tester, I've been doing more edges and looking at single bevels in particular about edge retention, the life, the stoutness of an edge. So that's what this line represents. Regardless of how thick their blade is, it's this first 20 thousandths 
from the actual cutting edge in that matters. And we're going to look at that a little bit closer. So here you see those same angles, 20, 24, 32, 35, and 40. But all you're seeing is the first 20 thousandths of that edge magnified. It won't matter how thick the blade is back at the ferrule. This is the part that's most susceptible to damage and doing all the work of cutting. You can have it sharp all the way back here. None of this matters. This is what's doing the cutting. So if I look at a 20 degree angle, which is this one right here, and I come back that 20 thousandths, my blade thickness where it's susceptible to curl is 0 0.007. There is not much material here to work with. Jumping up to 24 or 25 degrees like the cutthroats, we go from 007. It's only been 4 degrees over that 20 thousandths, but we've jumped a lot in material. 32 like iron will really jumped a bunch, right? 35 degrees in the VPA. Uh, it, it's a magnitude more than what we had. And in the aliens, we've got a ton more material, all occurring within that first 20 thousands. So why does that matter? Well, I've killed enough animals with single bevels and I've inspected enough edges under a microscope and through the sharpness tester and actually made my own single bevel heads and I've taken bear and I've taken deer with homemade single bevels and I'm here to tell you that that lack of material that we see on these lower slopes it can be problematic now I'm going to show you an edge later on from my cutthroat that I took a big hog with and you're going to see that first 20 thousandths damage and then I'm going to make a blade just for the purposes of this video that is beveled at 20 degrees and I'm going to show it to you close up and what side loads mean. Here I made a 20 degree single bevel blade out of 01 tool steel. I do custom knife making and I'm making a broadhead for myself that's going to use 01 tool steel because it's a great steel. But this is a 20 degree single bevel. And I wanted to make this blade to explain what I'm talking about on side loading when a single bevel rotates through an animal through flesh and bone forces on this bevel push the head that way away from the bevel and the head on the blade on the other side is aiding in that rotation so that's the whole point of a single bevel is the rotation the issue is as it's rotating this way this flat edge is encountering forces that are acting on the side. Those are bones. Things that the reason we shoot single bevels is to breach bones so we can split bones as we go through an animal. And I'm going to put this in the vise and I'm going to show you what I mean. All right, I hope we are able to focus on what I'm going to show you here. So this is that same 01 tool steel 20 degree single bevel when the edge is that thin the side load that I talked about pushing on it during rotation is going to impart a lot of forces now here I've got a wooden dowel I'm going to push on the edge and you're going to see that edge bends it yields like aluminum foil there's just nothing there to back up the forces. You see how it's bending? Now, 01 tool steel is nothing to laugh about. This is a great steel. But I don't care if this is made out of unobtainium, 
It's forged in the fires of Mordor and quenched in unicorn blood. It's just, there's no metal to support the side loads. Just pushing on it with my thumbnail can cause bending and distortion in the metal. Now, when I reach a yield, I go too far, the blade will break, it will chatter, it will roll, and that's just unacceptable for a broadhead blade. I'm going to show you a cutthroat head that I took a hog with. I didn't resharpen it purposely because I wanted to show you this. Now that one's sharpened at 24 degrees. This is only 20 degrees and there are makers out there making 20 degree single bevels now and it will give you more rotation no doubt but at what cost when you can push that edge over and distort it with something as soft as a wooden dowel and not a lot of force when this hits massive bone you're going to see edge distortion edge deformation edge damage so I, I contend that 20 degrees is too shallow of an edge to try to make a broadhead blade. I don't think the prior video showed very well what was happening. There was some focus issues. So I took the blade out of the vise and want to show you what that 20 degree single bevel edge looks like after pushing on it with a wooden dowel. As you can see, it suffered some yield, which is not acceptable in a broad head, right? You want it to pass through the animal and be reusable. There's some really nice broadheads out there that are investments, and you don't want them to be a single use, one time edge. When I mentioned earlier the distance from the cutting edge down to where most damage occurs, where it's most susceptible, is about 20 thousandths from the edge. And that's what we're seeing here, the same thing. Um, it's just, there's just not much metal there at 20 degrees. Now, I took a hog with a cutthroat, which is a 24 degree bevel, and I purposely did not resharpen it because it makes an excellent point about thin edge damage that occurs. Now a cutthroat is a super hard metal. Now I'll, I would be able to sharpen this out. I probably will lose a few grains of metal but I'll, I'll be able to get this out and I'm going to show you this under a microscope and explain edge rolling, edge breaking, that uh, will make a little bit more sense under magnification. I mean you can see it pretty well here but um, there has to be some metal behind a single bevel yes you get more rotation with a longer bevel it's got more forces to push on this side and push on this side but again during that rotation there is side loading taking place it's pushing on this edge as it's spinning can that edge withstand it that is a product of material being there more than the recipe and the metal. I know it sounds like I'm coming down on the cutthroat heads. I'm not. They're great heads and 
I've had a lot of success with them from water buffalo to big hogs to red stags. Um, I just learned how to improve on the situation and that's what I'm going to show next. So now you're thinking, man, I'm really bummed out. I have these great single bevel heads um, with a low grind angle for a lot of rotation. And now Ron's telling me I'm going to have a lot of edge damage. Well, here's what I did. Here's that same piece of metal that I had originally ground at 20 degrees and showed you the edge deformation with a wooden dowel. Then I reground that same edge by putting a 32 degree angle on just the first 20 thousandths. So you get all of that slope surface and spin rotation of 20 degrees, but the strength of 32 or 35 or whatever it is that you want for an angle. So if your uh, single bevel heads have a low bevel, but you want more strength, it'll be an edge so nice you'll grind it twice. Actually, you won't have to ever touch the factory edge again. You'll only ever be sharpening the part of the blade that is most susceptible to damage. And now, going from 20 to 32 or 35 or whatever you want, um, you will add back the strength, still have the rotation, and uh, I think you'll see a vast improvement.